Okay, Algebra, let's continue to work with rational expressions. Uh, I think this is going to be another fun one today. Let's talk about what we already know how to do. From elementary school, you remember how to multiply fractions, right? Over here, you can see when you're multiplying a fraction, all you got to do is multiply the top across. So multiply that 2 times 3 and you get 6 and multiply the bottom. 7 times 5 is 35. That's all you have to do. When you divide fractions, it's just slightly more complicated. If we start with 3 fifths times 3 sevenths, or I'm sorry, divided by 3 sevenths, um, I think a lot of times your elementary teacher would say something like keep, change, flip, where you're going to keep the first fraction, change the sign to multiply, and then flip the second fraction. So when we do that, after we flip the second fraction, it's just going to be 7 over 3. Now, one other thing that we can do before we multiply these and go straight across, we can reduce. I have a 3 on the top and the bottom, so those will cancel out, and all I have left is 7 over 5. Now, we're going to use that exact same concept today as we multiply and divide rational expressions. So, let's go ahead and look at this first one. This first one looks really, really really complicated. We're going to have to multiply whatever's on the top. We're going to multiply our numerators and we're going to multiply our denominators, the whatever's on the bottom, and then we're going to get an answer that's hopefully somewhat easy to understand. But let's look at this. If you remember, I just simplified something down here when I had a 3 on the top and the bottom. I was able to cancel that out before I multiplied. So let's look and see if there's anything on top that we can cancel. Here's what I see. I see an x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. So let's cancel those things out. I see an, x plus an 8x plus 3 on the top and on the bottom. So let's cancel that out. And on the top, all I have left is x plus 2 times 2. So on the top, all I have left is a 2 and an x plus 2. Let's just write this down here, 2 times x plus 2. And on the bottom, all I have left is an x. And let's just keep it just like that. That's going to be our answer. That's how we simplify it. Let's do another one. Same thing here. Look what we have on the top and the bottom. We have a b plus 4 on the top and on the bottom. We have a b minus 3 on the top and on the bottom. So all we have left for our simplified expression is 4 over b minus 4. Pretty sweet. Let's look at the next one. Okay, let's look at this one. Now, when I'm looking at this, I'm seeing there's nothing on the top and the bottom that's the same that we can cancel? Or is there? Is there? Maybe there is. Let's, let's look and see what we really have. Because this top, I bet I can factor this one. Can I find numbers that multiply to get 16 and add to get 10? Hmm, multiplies to get 16, adds to get 10. 8 and 2. 8 and 2. This is going to be 8 and 2. Bigger number always gets the first sign, and this plus means the signs are the same. So we've got n plus 8 times n plus 2, and that's just what that is. Let's look at the bottom down here. I bet that I can factor this one as well. Multiplies to get 8 and adds to get 9. That's going to be 8 and 1. Bigger number always gets the first sign right here. That always goes with the bigger number. And this plus means these two signs are going to be the same. So n plus 8 times n plus 1. Now this one up here, I think, this, I think these are a little bit harder to see. But always look for a greatest common factor. I can divide both of these by 5. So this is just going to be 5 times n minus 2. Okay. So now I can see a bunch of stuff actually that is going to cancel. I see an n plus 8, and maybe I'm going to write this in blue just so it contrasts a little bit more. n plus 8s are going to cancel. The n minus 2s are going to cancel. And what do we have left? Well, on the top, we just have n plus 2. And on the bottom, it looks like we've got a 5 and an n plus 1. So there we go. That's what we got. Hey, this really isn't all that bad. Let's look at this one. 
Okay, so first thing I see, this is a divide. So we know how to divide with fractions. We just have to keep change flip, right? Now, I think what I'm going to do before I actually rewrite that is I'm going to go ahead and factor the top. This expression, this polynomial right there, What's that going to be? Multiplies to get 12 and subtracts to get 1. Um, maybe 4 and 3. 4 and 3 will multiply to get 12 and subtract to get 1. Bigger number always gets that first sign. And since this is a minus, the two signs are opposite. We've got a minus and we've got a plus. So that's what we've got going right there. Now, Let's rewrite it so that we can keep change and flip. Or maybe, maybe let's, not, let's not copy the whole thing down. Let's just change this. The x minus 4 has to come up here. x minus 4 goes to the top since it's a divide. x plus 3 has got to come to the bottom. And we're going to change this to a multiply. Okay. Now... We've got x plus 3's, those will cancel. And on the top, we've just got x minus 4 times x minus 4. And on the bottom, we just have 6. Now we could take this, but I bet we could write this a little bit better because x minus 4 times x minus 4, that's just going to be x minus 4 squared. So. What we've got, we can just simplify all the way down to this. x minus 4 squared over 6. Let's do another one. The top of the mountain for this lesson for sure. This is, this looks confusing, doesn't it? All right, so first of all, let's, Let's see that this is a division problem. So I know sooner or later, we're going to have to flip that second fraction, right? So let's just keep that in mind. And let's factor this first one. So I've got a y. Multiplies to get 7, subtracts to get 6. Um, 1 and 7. Bigger number always gets this first sign, so that's going to be a plus 7. And since this is a minus, these two signs have to be opposite. We've got a plus, and we've got a minus. Let's do this one down here. Numbers that multiply to get 9 and subtract to get 8, that's going to be 1 and 9. Bigger number always gets the first sign, so that's going to be a plus 9. And this minus means that the signs are opposite, so we've got a plus, and we've got a minus. Okay, so far so good. Now, I'm going to I'm going to factor this top one, but remember since we have to flip it, I'm just going to write it down here right away. Okay? Is that okay if I do that? I hope it is. So, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to get 14 and add to get 9. That's going to be 7 and 2. Bigger number always gets that first sign, so that's going to be a plus 7. And this plus means our signs are the same. y plus 7 and y plus 2. So that's what that is. Then the bottom, since it's a division, I have to flip to the top. Let's see what this is going to be. Numbers that multiply to get 18 and subtract to get 7, that's going to be 9 and 2. Bigger number gets the first sign, so that's going to be a plus. And since this is a minus, these two signs are different plus and minus. That's what we've got. So we kept the first one, we changed the sign, and we already flipped the second one. So now we're multiplication. Wow, this is a lot. This was not an easy problem, but it's about to get much, much easier. So let's cancel out the y plus 7s. I see a y minus 1 out here. Let's cancel those. Let's cancel the y plus 9's out, and in the end, all we're going to have is y minus 2 over y plus 2. Isn't that remarkable? We started out with such a complicated looking problem, and we were able to simplify it down to something relatively easy to understand. All right, so this is not easy. 
but just make sure you're being careful whether you multiply or divide so you know if you have to keep it or flip it and also factor those out and find all of those small little factors that we can cancel out. All right, I know you can do this. Good luck.